Dr. Neeraj Vinayak, Vice President and Head of the Oil, Gas and Chemical Business in ABB India. He has 22 years of professional experience spanning various management roles, including managing p and building growth strategies, and leading sales. I would request him on the stage, please. Good afternoon. Uh, I think a lot of presentations, beautiful, a lot of uh, new knowledge. As a student sitting out there in the chair, I was learning. But one thing which occurred to me was that we have a very, very uh, huge and very disparate cross-section of people in this room. Um, I have been interacting with quite a few of people during the breaks, maybe early in the morning. And uh, I'm not sure whether all of uh, what was presented in the morning or even something which I'm going to talk about is going to make, us make sense for all of the people in the room. So uh, wherever you believe, uh, you know, you think that it's not something that you gather, uh, you know, you can, obviously I'm not allowed to, you know, take questions, but I'm sure that during the break you can come and get clarifications and more than welcome. What I'm going to be talking about uh, is more from a process plant perspective. I also actually made some notes about uh, some stuff in the morning and I thought it would be relevant because uh, a lot of different types of topics we have touched upon. Everybody with me? Thank you. Uh, we, we believe that uh, we touched upon asset management, am I right? We touched upon asset management. So how many of you in the room can uh, define assets? How many of you can define assets for your own plant, for example? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thanks for the lights. Okay, good. So, you know, I'm sure that if I actually talk to about 15 of you who raise your hands, uh, you will look at assets differently. It's, it's going to be different for all of you. So maybe from a process plant perspective, uh, what could be assets? Uh, those of you who are from a little bit of process automation background, um, assets could be devices. And as Mr. Mehta touched upon in the morning, uh, you know, he has uh, the distinction of having, uh, you know, led and commissioned uh, the world's largest refinery complex and that too with two of its phases running on foundation field bus. Now those of us who are automation background, foundation field bus is not new for us. So when we say in this morning, IIoT, industrial internet of things, what are we trying to say? We are trying to say that, you know, there is an internet industrial and devices which are intelligent are in some fashion connected there. So let's ask ourselves a question. Are we not in our process plant perspective already having in some fashion uh, intranet existing? Particularly if I look at Jamnagar and Mehta Sahib gave the beautiful example, uh, I would say we definitely partly in the direction have moved. I think it may not be out there exactly and the definition of IIoT is still out in the large. There are many many agencies and many forums and many organizations giving different definitions. But I would say as process plan perspective, we already have a good amount of uh, 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 connected systems, devices. So it's not something new for us. Having said that, we also talked about assets, you know, because we're going to talk about enterprise asset management. So uh, we talked about in the previous sessions that a lot of compressor suppliers are managing or I would say monitoring is more appropriate word probably, monitoring their assets, that is compressors in many process units remotely. Yes, but is it true with, or is it possible with most of the devices there? Maybe some small pumps in the plant if you have uh, 50, motors running, do you really have a uh, remote monitoring solution deployed in all of them? Even, I would say, very advanced and uh, uh, large 
technologically advanced complexes like Reliance probably would have gaps somewhere, probably, and Mr. Mehta can correct me. But uh, I believe while we have pockets of assets being managed, we have pockets in our process plants where I believe uh, uh, we have connected devices, foundation field bus, maybe people from uh, maybe more discrete manufacturing have other field buses which are prevalent in the industry. I don't think that this whole innovation uh, that we talked about in the morning is something that can be adapted by the industry overnight. We talked about a lot of design and a uh, lot of innovation in the way we can utilize technology, we can utilize a lot of analytics uh, to you know, approach uh, things in a very different fashion as some of my previous speakers have mentioned. And all of that we talked about, and most that we talked about, except for uh, maybe a couple of people who touched upon, was all from a perspective of design, greenfield engineering. I have a question for this audience. We have maybe one and a half to two lakh process plants in this country. I don't know how many assets all these process plants would have. If we get a new technology or an innovation, do you think that overnight this industry can adapt to this innovation? No. So while, while I respect all that we talked about in the morning, I just want to make a little bit of tangential statement here that anything that is new definitely will have value, no doubt. But no place, neither economically nor technically it is possible that we can throw out the old overnight. Cannot. So we believe, and I will probably touch upon in my presentation, we believe uh, at ABB that uh, a lot of coexistence is critical. A lot of time, maybe, maybe uh, I would say a decade, and I'm not guessing here because I believe that it was not possible for people to guess what's happening today 10 years back. I'm not guessing here. But it will take time for sure. And there'll be a time, there'll be overlap, there'll be a coexistence required. The old cannot be thrown away. The new and the old will have to coexist, and that's the challenge for most of the people in the industry. While we really like the new things, I, I, I think I'm uh, making an answer to a couple of the points that came here that, you know, it cannot be thrown away, right? So uh, being, a, being a process plan perspective and automation engineer myself, um, you know, my complete approach and the conversation which I have with you all of you today is going to be from a standpoint of automation, architectures, plant information systems, or process automation systems, as we can probably define. As control systems have moved, you know, the, <coughs> the challenges which the industry has today are really on the board, and I don't really need to speak about it. Uh, I think a lot of speakers before me and a lot of them after me are going to speak about these. These are the same words that probably will be util used probably over the next two days. What is, what is different? I, I would like to, you know, take, maybe take four or five pages or two or three minutes to kind of touch upon how a traditional approach of an automation system, which is probably relevant in this context of asset management and industrial internet of things, uh, as process automation systems used to look like, and as power up automation systems used to look like, as evolution happened, a lot of process and power got merged, and um, the process would be more driven towards instruments and devices on foundation field bus, and the power would be a lot on IEC 61850, a lot of high voltage, um, low voltage distribution equipment, a lot of motors, Probably uh, today we have a control system which is more like a process and power integrated. As uh, these evolutions happen, uh, in some form or the other, uh, a lot of control systems, automation systems, plant networks, information systems look something like this, as you can see on the screen. Now, this is connected. We have a lot of things out here connected. We have devices connected. We have all kinds of equipments connected. 
And this connectivity, I think, is the major, I would say, advantage for the process industry today to adapt easily, fast to so-called the new uh, industrial internet of things. OK, let's look at how it could possibly look like tomorrow. And I'm risking it. It could look very different 15 years from now. And some of you would really remember this day. I don't know how many. But let's risk talking about how it will look like. But before that, you know, I uh, wanted to use this page to kind of dwell upon a little discussion that I had with my senior industry friend, Mr. Rehani, uh, in the break. And he said that all this IoT is great, Neeraj. But you know, what about the operator in the plant floor? Well, obviously, uh, there are challenges. It's not something which is going to happen uh, so easily. We have two kinds of operators example on the screen. We have an operator who's old, experienced, 25 years, 30 years, having been doing the same thing. He or she can probably spend two nights in a plant to solve a problem till the time the plant is up and running. That's how he's been groomed. And here, here is a new age operator who is more tech savvy and probably attention span very small. Uh, he's looking at the new technology in a very different way. What needs to make sense for all of us is that the so-called indus industrial internet of things or the innovation that we really bring in through analytics has to make sense and meaning so that we take the advantage of the old and also adapt to the old and make sure that the new is able to do more efficiently what the old was. This is, I think, key. That's the bottom line. But as uh, uh, probably things would move, uh, more and more data will be talked about. And more and more data, more and more data on the hand, you know, uh, people expecting uh, that all our devices around us will be very intelligent. We will be running, we will be running apps, and we will be running probably in small plants and small units stuff on apps. Uh, how many of you have seen um, in the last maybe month or so, uh, Mr. Sachin Tendulkar gave an advertisement about Live Pure Water Purifier on TV? Live Pure. Okay, five, six, seven, ten. Uh, do you all relate that, you know, whatever I'm talking about or whatever we are talking about today has got a real live, you know, non-industrial example of having an IoT device in your home? You know, the water filter is supposedly, I have not seen it though, purely from the advertisement I can tell you, the water filter is supposedly able, able, is able to tell you through an app in your hand, in your phone, when the cartridge needs to be replaced. And Possibly through the app, a communication goes to a dealer who can probably deliver a cartridge. And who knows, who knows on a credit card detail which is loaded onto your phone, you don't need to, need to even order. The cartridge will be delivered and your credit card will be charged. And that is a live example of IoT. What else? That's very close to our house, our home. But can we all imagine, you know, we, I being a little bit of oil and gas background, can we imagine when will our LPG cylinder in a house send an email through a Wi-Fi to a dealer that, look, I am only at 5% of LPG now, and now is the time to deliver in the next two days. And who knows, data analytics can probably tell you that this particular household requires this gas for next three days only. And this is based on the consumption of data of this consumer. And you will have a cylinder delivered in your house exactly a day before when it is going to get over. Now that's use, that's practical use. But imagine, is that not possible when you have something called life pure telling your you know, cartridge is now ready to be replaced? Well, these are examples, you know, and LPG cylinder example is something which I was uh, talking to an uh, uh, industry colleague last week in Delhi, and he had this need, and he thought that this is a very important uh, area for the industry. Imagine what, what an LPG cylinder, which is IoT enabled, can do. It can, it can provide a huge amount of efficiency in the system because, as Mr. Modi wants, uh, he has given five, 5 crore new connections and LPG has to reach so many places. All of us, probably in this room, have two LPG cylinders in a house. Am I right? How many of you have one? I will not see your hand. 
Everybody will have two. So if you have something working like this, you have taken out how many crore cylinders out of the supply chain? Look at the efficiency. And then, you know, take it uh, to the next level, the same IoT enabled LPG cylinder is able to tell you that the gas is passing for the next six, last six hours and nobody is going to click for six hours, so something is leaking. So there's a mail going to a, you know, dealer and a dealer calls your house and asks you, well, do you have a gas leak? If not, please check. That's value. Well, we can talk about these things. These are very theoretical examples which I thought will be worth mentioning because I don't think technology is any use if it's not bringing value, right? This is uh, automation systems as we believe of tomorrow. Uh, a lot of device, a lot of data, a lot of cloud, a lot of software, which probably today already in some parts and some manners is available in the current control systems in the uh, process plants that we have. Okay, let's look at, as I was saying, uh, how a process or a plant network, a process automation network could possibly look in the future. There will be a time before the future comes when, as we were talking about, the old and the new has to coexist. As you cannot throw out, throw out all the motors, which are non-intelligent uh, devices in a plant, similarly, you cannot throw out your control systems. You still have to live with them for years because that's a huge investment, and investment has to be protected. So there will be a time when probably, you know, you can have a model or architecture where the automation systems coexist with the so-called intelligent devices which are connected on IIoT. How a lot of stuff which was done in a traditional manner slowly can then translate into a lot of in-home cloud, in-house cloud, external cloud, that's a debate which I cannot get into, but something which can be done with a lot of software, which is possible. All right, so is it possible to have only indus industrial internet of things? We believe that um, it is incomplete without uh, people and services. And I think uh, quite a few of uh, my previous speakers in the day have talked about the relevance of people, the human factor, the human angle. And we also believe services of all types, uh, which can be provided by, uh, I think, uh, possibly the suppliers, the so-called sometimes uh, subject matter experts, uh, even at times old operators in a plant, because I'm sure a lot of process plants which are running from 20 years have operations people who do not really uh, are in the plant any further any further and there are young operators and there are young maintenance people who probably do not have the kind of knowledge that the experienced person before him who was operating the plant had so there was a talk about knowledge automation well why i fundamentally believe that not all of the knowledge can be automated but uh, yes, it can be attempted. So people and relevance of people cannot be taken away. So IIoT is incomplete without people and services. Okay. Uh, for, for, industrial internet of things, uh, uh, one of the possible way forwards, and I am very careful when I word this page, uh, one of the possible way forwards could be what we are trying to put here. Uh, use existing sensors, use devices which can coexist with uh, equipment and assets, and uh, make the most of the new technologies and the old existing assets. And I'm not advocating this as an architecture, no, please don't misunderstand me. This is one of the possible ways. What is more important here is that uh, while we can have a connected world, we can have an integrated solution, we can have an information network, a plant network, which is uh, really 
moving on the cutting edge of technology. But what do we do with all this data? And uh, one of my, uh, you know, uh, friends from the industry here, from I think Tata Chemicals, was asking in the previous session, is what do we do with so much data that we collect? You know. Well, I think while it is happening in certain pockets and in certain organizations, uh, I think there is a lot to be done in the industry as a whole, still in terms of predictive maintenance. A lot. Because we still probably have moved from reactive maintenance to proactive maintenance. What probably is possible with the connected world and uh, um, with all due regards to my friend from Tata Chemicals, Mithapur, that we will definitely be able to make a lot of value out of the analytical part of the information and then be able to predict. Now, will it be possible without any human intervention? We believe no. There is knowledge and subject matter experts required. Now, as my topic of the day suggests intersection, well, I was not too sure whether intersection of IoT or IIoT with the uh, enterprise asset management would be more appropriate to put or maybe integration because I don't think one is meaningful without the other. Uh, you know, what are we going to do uh, in enterprise asset management without having connected devices? So the so-called intranet or the industrial internet is definitely the backbone of any such future endeavors as to be able to do predictive maintenance or asset management. Some certain models. I will take a minute to give an example, which is uh, of uh, a shaft train on a motor. Uh, I would like you to look at a small little card, credit card size device, which is uh, on the motor out there in the picture. Now that's, that's only one way IoT or IIoT can be exploited. If I have a plant where I have 150 motors, just because there is an innovation today doesn't mean I will be able to throw out all the old motors and get some new intelligent motors in place. So there has to be something in between. How do you really get such devices to be intelligent to the extent that at, at least a certain amount of value maybe from an asset management st standpoint comes out. So here's the device which uh, we at ABB take pride we have uh, which just can be stuck on and uh, maybe not, not in a hazardous environment yet but uh, you can walk through the plant, you can have an app and it will feed in data about the certain critical parameters of the motor's operation in terms of vibration, temperature, and there are others which I may not be able to talk here. But all the data of your motors is a two hour walk in the plant. And you will be able to predict at the end of two hours how things are gonna work. Now you don't even talk about a plant Wi-Fi here. We are simply talking about an app and you walk through the plant. And this, dev this device which you're seeing here is no longer a theory. This is something which is available in hand in Bangalore. Some of you are interested can contact some of our colleagues here and uh, it can be <coughs> demonstrated to you. Uh, it's available very much in uh, Bangalore. I'll, uh, I have only seven minutes left. So what, what's possible with IoT or IIoT? We believe uh, the whole value chain needs to be optimized and uh, it's possible only when we have all the things which is the control part, the operations, maintenance, design, and there are various aspects of these small little boxes that you see on the screen were talked about in the whole day. Maybe a lot will be talked about even today further. But unless we really put it all together, you know, the whole value chain really doesn't deliver. That's our view. And I think there are bits and pieces which are applicable, relevant in each of these pieces. What's key, as we believe uh, at ABB, is that uh, while a lot of data analytics and big data is uh, empowering us. A lot of connected world and IIoT is uh, available as an innovation. New devices will keep coming up. I don't know which direction this whole technology will move. But for sure, one thing which is practical and possible today is collaboration. And if a lot of this connectivity is really leveraged, 
then a lot of this knowledge uh, management challenges, a lot of this geography location challenges, a lot of this remote operation challenges can be completely taken care of. And that's possible because of this connected, innovated world. See, there is an offshore example. All the, there are live examples of offshore assets now running in the North Sea with completely unmanned platforms. Complete productions running without any people on the offshore. So this is just a depiction. You know, locations are not important. It's a connected world. I, I would not uh, uh, take further time, maybe a minute. We believe that uh, collaboration in this kind of a data or information driven system is key. If you want a little bit more information about possible asset management, we have a small little uh, demo outside, which all of you can visit and see and ask some questions. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah, it was tough keeping people awake for sure. <laughs> Thank you.